Welcome to Pastor's Chat today. Today we'll be looking at James chapter 1 verses 26 through 27. James has been encouraging us not to be deceived. He said, don't deceive yourselves. Now in this passage, he says, deceiving your own heart. So it's not just a mind deception that takes place, it's a heart deception. And what can be worse than that? So in these two verses, he makes this statement. If anyone thinks he is religious, thinks he is religious, and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is vain, is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled, O King James says, spotless, before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unspotted from the world or unstained from the world. As we've been studying this passage, we've been talking about how that we should be growing into spiritual maturity and what takes place as that happens. And so as we are looking into the mirror of God's Word to reflect the real condition of our heart, we have found that the Word of God does several things. It examines us, it restores us, and then it transforms us. Has that taken place in your life? As we looked at the whole aspect of what God's Word does and what we need to do it to keep from being deceived, we must receive the Word, we must practice the Word, and we need to share the Word. And that's what these two verses are about, sharing God's Word. That word religion means the outward practice, the service of a God the outward practice, the service of a God. It's used only five times in the entire New Testament, this word religion, and often it's translated worshiping, worshiping. Pure religion has nothing to do with ceremonies, temples, or special days. Pure religion means practicing God's word and sharing it with others through three things, through speech, through service, and separation from the world. In this passage of Scripture, it says, first, if you think you are religious, but you do not bridle your tongue. Well, there's speech. So there's so many references to speech in this letter, this small letter that gives the impression that the tongue is a very serious problem in the church, in the assembly of the believers. It's the tongue that reveals the heart from because the Bible says from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If the heart is right, the speech will be right. A controlled tongue means a controlled body. James chapter three, verse one. Well, also not only speech, but service. In verse 27 also, as we've seen ourselves and Christ in the mirror of the word, we must see others in their needs. When, when Isaiah saw Jesus and saw God on his throne high and lifted up, then as he cleansed his own heart, he saw the needs of the world. And when God said, whom shall I send? Isaiah said, here am I, send me. We cannot pay God enough, pay God enough to substitute for our own personal service to the Lord and to the world around us. And then the last aspect here of pure religion, a religion that's undefiled, is, it says, undefiled, separation. This world uh, is a place that literally is the society without God. Satan is the prince of the world. The lost are children of the world, Luke 16, 8. As the children of God, we're in the world physically, but we're not part of the world spiritually, John chapter 17, 11 through 16. We are sent into the world by our Lord to win others to Jesus Christ. But it's only as we maintain our separation from the world that we can serve others. And this is so important. You see, the world wants to spot the Christian, wants to defile the Christian, wants to destroy the testimony of the believer. And so we're encouraged here, keep yourself unspotted. And the way you do it is you love the orphan and help feed the orphan and you take care of the widow. You do something very practical. Oh, my friend, today we separate ourselves from the world as we serve the Lord Jesus Christ for love for him. And what a difference it makes as we do that every day. 
James chapter 1, the entire chapter, great chapter to remind us we need to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ every day. You have a wonderful day.